Welcome to Simple Nursing's mini lesson series. Today we're diving into type 1 and type 2 diabetes. In this video, we'll break down the key components of diabetes, explain the risk factors and labs, and explore signs and symptoms, along with how to treat them so that you can keep your clients safe. Now, if you're a Simple Nursing member, I recommend that you pull up two study guides to follow along with this video. All right, let's get into it. First, think of diabetes as diatretes. The thick sugar in the blood turns the blood into mud, this syrupy, sugary blood. And over time, the high sugar destroys vital organs and blood vessels. Remember, blood sugar naturally increases when we eat. And then the pancreas releases insulin from beta cells and enzymes to help break down food into fuel. Insulin acts like a key to put sugar and potassium into the cell with insulin, making hungry cells really happy. So without enough insulin, sugar and potassium can get into the cell. So in result, glucose builds up in the blood, leading to high blood sugar levels. In diabetes, insulin is the problem. So when it comes to insulin, in type 1, we have none. You see, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease that causes the body to attack itself, killing its own pancreas. Therefore, no insulin is produced. Now, it's important to know that type 1 is genetic, so simply think you can pass it on to your son with type 1. Clients with type 1 are insulin-dependent for life. And typically, type 1 is diagnosed in childhood, but diagnosis can occur at any age. Now, in terms of type 2, we have few insulin receptors that are working, since the problem is you. Your diet and sedentary lifestyle eventually leads to obesity and insulin resistance. Cells become lazy and overused, and the insulin receptor sites are like an overused keyhole that wears out and just ignore the insulin. This is what's called insulin resistance. So simply think, in type 2, the cells are through. They quit responding to the insulin. Type 2 most commonly develops in adults, but rising obesity rates means we're seeing more and more children with type 2 diabetes. Now, moving over to risk factors. In type 1, there are none. This is a genetic problem that you can pass on to your son with type 1. So with type 2, the risk factor is related to you, your diet, and lifestyle. And there's a little bit of genetics. So the risk factors include obesity, sedentary lifestyle, high cholesterol, smoking, plus other things like genetics and racial and ethnicity disparities. So let's move over to labs. Normal values for blood glucose is 70 to 115. For fasting glucose, it's typically less than 100, and hemoglobin A1c should be less than 6.5. But in diabetes, we see blood glucose over 200 on random tests, fasting blood glucose over 126, and a hemoglobin A1c over 6.5%. So a quick memory trick here. Simply think hemoglobin A1c below 6 is controlled and fixed. And over 6.5, we gotta revive. These high blood sugar levels can lead to specific signs and symptoms. So remember, when the blood is turned to mud, the body tries to get rid of all this thick, sugary blood with the three Ps. First is polyuria, too much urine as the body tries to urinate all this blood sugar out of the body and into the potty. The next P is polydipsia. Simply think you're going for a dip inside of a swimming pool. This one means drinking too much fluid. The body tries to dilute all that sugar inside the blood. And the last one here is polyphagia, too much eating. This is from excessive hunger as the cells starve from the lack of glucose. Now, besides the three Ps, other symptoms of high blood sugar can include hot and dry skin, dehydration, abdominal pain, blurred vision, even weight loss, and reoccurring infections. So in type 1 with DKA, we may see fruity smelling breath and even Kuzmal respirations. And in type 2, with HHNS, signs and symptoms may overlap, including extreme dehydration and very high sugar. But no ketones or acid, and it usually has a slower onset than DKA. Now, on the other side, we also have to watch for hypoglycemia, that low blood sugar, less than 70. It's really important to know that this one is far more deadly than high blood sugar. Simply think, hypogly, the brain will die. So we have to watch for critical signs. 
Since hypoglycemia is so deadly, our very first treatment is to give sugar. So remember, if our client is awake, then we A, ask them to eat either juice, soda, crackers, or low-fat milk. But if our client is asleep, we S, stab them with IV dextrose. And we always reassess sugars 15 minutes after any intervention. Now let's talk about treatment for high blood sugar. So to treat high sugar, we use insulin to put that sugar back into the cell with that insulin. Remember, in type 1, we have none. There's no insulin. So these clients are insulin dependent for life. So some key considerations related to insulin. Think of peaks and plates. We always give food during peaks. And also, you have to know the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia when that blood sugar is really low. Now let's talk about safety for specific insulin. For insulin that has no peak, this requires no mixing. Next is only regular insulin can be given IV. So remember the R for regular insulin is R, right in the vein. And always draw up clear to cloudy. Now clients can always use insulin pumps, the CSII. The number one benefit is that it delivers a steady dose of insulin with fewer swings in blood sugar levels. It provides a nice, even basal rate. And remember, we always assess the client before the machine. Now, for type 2, the first treatment is to fix you, your habits. So we always want to focus on diet and exercise first. Then we give oral medications. And very lastly is insulin as a last resort. So in terms of oral medications, here are the four oral antidiabetic drugs to know. First is metformin. The next drug to know is glipizide and glyburide. The third one to know is pyglitazone and TZD. And fourth is acarbose and precose. Now, whether we're using insulin or oral diabetic agents, we're simply aiming for a lower hemoglobin A1C level, less than 6.5 for blood sugar control. All right, that wraps it up. If you want to go beyond this video, our Simple Nursing membership has extra resources like detailed colorful study guides, a full library of in-depth videos, and practice quizzes that focus on diabetes, and really every other topic that you'll ever need in nursing school so that you can be fully prepared. Sign up with this link right here for access. And also, please don't forget to like this video, share with a classmate if you find it helpful, and subscribe for more nursing content. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you there.